So, we have been discussing the effect of velocity saturation. In fact, what we have to see is I will just quickly go through that. What we saw was the two cases, okay. the two cases which we see in the diagram here. One of them, the channel is pinching off at the drain end. The other one, the channel is not pinching off. Both of them actually have current saturation and both of them have current saturation due to velocity saturation. The only difference is in the first case it is a long channel device and in such situations we have seen that the velocity saturation and the drain pinch off at the drain end coincide. That is actually the voltage drop here V b i minus V g s plus V t sat turns out to be equal to A p 0. That is shockless condition. Okay. Now, in this case, these are short channel devices or small pinch of voltages, both cases we have seen, then the velocity saturation occurs much before the channel pinch off. That is what is seen here. Now, so current saturation is due to onset of velocity saturation in both cases at the drain end the velocity saturation at the drain end. In long channel devices, it coincides with the channel pinch off. This equation is not valid, it cannot be used really for determining V t sat in general case. It can be used in long channel devices or in devices where V p 0 is small, because our criterion was the a parameter alpha which is actually equal to so this is very much larger than 1 that is l is very large and v p 0 being large small even if v p 0 is large if l is very large that will be much greater than 1 shockless condition and if this is very much small this will be very small compared to 1 if that is small particularly for small channel devices then you have you cannot apply that V t set criteria in this particular one. So, in general what you do is you approximate the velocity field characteristics by piecewise linearization. V is proportional, proportional to electric field till the electric field is E s saturation field and at that point up to that point V is equal to mu n into E for E less than or equal to that. It is valid even at this point and beyond that point velocity equal to saturation velocity. Okay. Now, and saturation velocity is given also by this equation which is valid right up to that point. So, now what is the difficulty here? The difficulty is in shockless analysis you assume the saturation would occurs at a particular value of V t sat, which gives V b i minus V g s plus V t sat equal V p 0. Okay. Now, if the saturation occurs at voltage less than that, you cannot use that current condition, but you know that saturation will occur when the in, any, in, in general case saturation will occur when the velocity saturates at the drain end. Okay. So, that is why you have two unknowns now. Previous case you were assuming this and then finding out ideas, substituting in the equation for ID. Now you in the two equations, I just gone through it and quickly go through that. So, for E less than E of S, that is in this region, that is from the source end close to the drain end, drain end of the channel, you can write that equation. All that we have done is, I am just quickly going through that because we have discussed in the last lecture, all that we have done is V d s V d sat by V p 0 I write as U d s normalized and I d s is actually capital I d s divided by G naught V p 0 normalized value of current normalized values of voltages. So, U g s is V b i minus V g s by V p 0. In fact, it makes this equation look bit simpler normalized val values with respect to V p 0 
and this quantity is u d sat plus v b i minus v g s by v p 0. This is the standard equation that we derived from calculus analysis which assumes velocity is equal to mu into e that is valid up to this point. So, now once you go to the drain end okay, once you go to the drain end the we have seen that the current can be written as alpha into 1 minus this quantity. Okay, this I do not have to go through it once again. We have discussed that. All that we did was we wrote the equation j is equal to q n into v and v is equal to v of s and current is equal to q n into v of s into area and area is w into h minus that a. So, we substituted for h and a, a in terms of v p 0, h in some terms of v d sat that is what we get here. Okay. So, this is just to recapitulate your memory which you did last time. Now, so you have got equation 1 and equation 2 ideas okay, that is one unknown, u d s is another unknown and we are writing this equation for a particular gate voltage. So, u g s is in a given equation u g s is fixed. So, what you are telling is in general i d s is given by these two equations. This is for e less than e of s, this is e equal to or greater than e of s, but what you have to understand is that this current and this current are the same, because this is in the channel region up to the drain end, this is a current at the drain end. So, whatever enters the channel goes through the channel and leaves the channel. So, these two are equal. So, in other words what you are telling is two unknowns are there i d s and u d s and two equations are there. Equate the two, okay, we are elevating i d s. Now, you have got alpha is equal to u d s minus two thirds of u d s minus plus u g s into 3 by 2 that is this quantity divided by this quantity alpha. All that we did is equated the two. So, left hand side goes off alpha becomes equal to that right hand side of this divided by this quantity. Okay. In fact, initially we wrote this equation also last time, but we deviated from this point and said let us take alpha is very much larger than 1, let us take alpha is less than very much 1. That told us that alpha equal to very much larger than 1 satisfies shockless condition. That is why we did that. Now, let us take a look at the general equation. In fact, this general equation was derived by Michael Schur at Transler Polytechnic right now. Okay. So, what he did, what was done there is for a particular u g s, you get i d versus v d s characteristics. Okay. Now, what we did here is we assume a particular value of alpha and find out u d s or alternately plot u d s as a function of alpha for a given i u g s. u g s is v g s v b i minus v g s by v p 0 is less than 1. Okay. So, for any given u g s what you do is alpha versus u d s you plot analytically. When I say analytical the meaning is I got that from this, this equation is rigorous. Okay. So, substitute put give values for u d s, u d s here, u d s here everything for a given u g s find out what alpha is. Okay. The correct way would be find put alpha and find what is u d s is that means, that has got to be numerical, but you can get around it with the simple calculator. So, that is analytical. So, now what was done in literature way back by Michael Shore was okay, you get a u d s versus alpha plot which you obtain rigorously for a particular u g s. I can approximate it, okay. I am sorry, this is numerical, not analytical, this is a numerical value, but what he did was what I mentioned just now is you take u d s value find alpha, but you can numerically also can do or rigorously you can do find out alpha versus u d s which matches with this thing. So, you plot alpha versus u d s with this from this equation. Okay. Now, you get an analytic expression which fits in very close to that. So, what they did this is uh, in a uh, in not a very good language, but you can say that it is adjusting it. You adjust those equations. Inter, that is called interpolation and so you can say that what they have found is this equation 
can be fitted by analytical, analytical expression with this. Okay. That is u d s as a function of alpha for a given u g s can be obtained by this. They have plotted number of curves like this for different u g s. So, I shown only one curve for one u g s. They have plotted number of curves with the different u g s and then said I can fit in u d s versus u g s through alpha by this equation. This we have to take it in fact you can substitute and see that holds good for different u g s numerical and analytical. Analytical is this expression. Okay. Now, once you have got this, see ultimately what do you want? You want to get i d s versus u d s. So, you got u d s as a saturation voltage as a function of u g s. In shock less analysis, what did you get? You got saturation voltage in terms of u g s. See, if you recall shock less assumption that is alpha very much greater than 1 v b i minus v g s plus v d sat is equal to v g 0. So, v d sat is obtained in terms of u g s and alpha is of course, hidden in here it is not coming into picture here, but here you are obtaining v d sat in terms of u g s. Okay? But with a more involved equation because it is a general expression which fits in closely into the numerical thing. Now, okay, use this equation, use this equation in this equation. We have got an analytical expression for UDS. Okay. Let me go back to that. You have got an analytical expression for UDS. Now, what you do is substitute i d s equals alpha into 1 minus root of all that you do is substitute for this analytical expression that you got just now. This sum amount of interpolation or extrapolation whatever you want to call it from the numerical is a best fit curve that they have obtained and they have found that it holds good for different v g s. Substitute for that then you get i d s in terms of but you got u d s in terms of u g s. Okay. That means, you have removed u d s and replaced it with in terms of alpha and u g s. So, right hand side contains only alpha and u g s. Okay. So, you do that then again little bit of curve fitting they did they got that expression. So, you can see that it is not a straightforward thing that they have done, but gone about it that way and found which gives the best fit. The power of this getting this particular analytic expression is you can see it, see what happens when alpha changes. Because after all, let us see what is this expression. If this expression is correct, when alpha is very much greater than 1, you must get mu n c s w by 2 l v g s minus v g s whole square. Let us see what it is. So, what I do now is remove the, those normalizing parameters. I d s is capital I d s by g naught p v p 0. So, I just substituted for that and alpha divided by 1, minus 1, by 1 plus 4 alpha is retained and this quantity is v b i minus v g s by v p 0. We have come out as normalizing parameter writing the actual currents. Okay. Now, what we do is remove this v p 0 square outside. So, you get g naught by v p 0, v p 0 divided by v 0 square that is that alpha by 1 plus 4 alpha is there within bracket of course, v p 0 minus v b a plus v g s whole square. Now, what we do is we do remember that g naught by 4 v p 0 is the term that is mu c s c s w by 2 l. Okay. So, I will multiply by 4 divide by 4 oh, not yet I have rewritten that equation. Okay. Multiply this by 4 divide by 4 same equation I have rewritten 4 4 okay. and also what we have done is substituted for this quantity 
A G S minus B threshold, okay, because P B A minus B P 0 is the threshold voltage. So, that is what we have done. First, what I have done is substituted for this quantity and then what I did is multiplied by 4 divided by 4. What is this quantity now? G naught by 4 V P 0. Okay. If you recall, G naught is actually equal to Q and D W. Q and D mu n that is sigma into w a divided by s and v p 0 is q and d a square divided by so divide by that and by 4 you get that. In fact, q and d etcetera cancels and you get we have seen this earlier. So, that is actually this quantity. Okay. Now, you can see I again rewrite it and this quantity is nothing but the beta that we are calling beta naught I call it. Okay. This quantity called it beta naught and 4 alpha by 1 plus 4 alpha into that. So, the whole thing I call it as beta. Okay, let me go back to this now. Last time we saw okay, Buckley's model. What does it give you? It is at is equal to okay, VGS minus threshold square. This is what we saw from Shockley's model, and this I call it as beta naught. Just beta naught because to distinguish from what we are going to call later. So, in this case, what you have got is now what we got is that quantity, see the same as Shockley's equation, except you have got a multiplying factor 4 alpha by 1 plus 4 alpha. Okay, that is all what I got. So, I retain this term as beta naught, beta naught into 4 alpha by 1 plus 4 alpha V g s minus V p threshold square. So, the total thing we can call it as beta. So, in fact, beta will be the factor which decides what is your current saturation current is for a given V g s and it is also a factor which determines what is the value of transconductance. Okay. Now, I just deliberately did this analysis because it gives lot of insight into what is happening and you keep on reducing the channel length. Let us see what happens. So, here if alpha is very much large compared to 1, what is this quantity? 1, then you get that expression beta naught into V g s minus V 3, the shockless analysis. Alpha is very much larger than 1 is actually channel length is long. So, Shockley's analysis holds good there. Transconductance, current everything is same as Shockley's analysis. Now, that is the thing. And alpha is very much less than 1. Go back to that equation. When alpha is very much less than 1, all 4 alpha is very much less than 1, this becomes beta naught into 4 alpha. So, I can neglect that beta naught into 4 alpha that is beta naught into 4 L e s by V p 0. So, you recall alpha is this quantity L e s by E s is electric field saturation field by V p 0. Okay. So, now what is this beta because after all what we got now is so in general what we have got is A general expression I d sat equals beta naught into 4 alpha divided by 1 plus 4 alpha.
that, that is equal to beta times a g s minus a t cos Okay, what I am trying to get at is that beta this quantity. So, this is the thing alpha very much large then this becomes beta naught itself then alpha is very small okay, that becomes beta naught into 4 alpha and alpha is actually equal to okay, alpha is equal to L yes okay so now okay so very clear long channel and short channel but the general thing but what we want to see now is that beta by beta naught beta is actually a factor which will decide what is the transconductance is or the current is for a given p g s minus v threshold what is the current current is larger if beta is larger now you keep on reducing alpha that means you keep on reducing channel length okay for a given pinch off voltage beta by beta naught keeps on falling what is the effect of that so this is the numbers I just put the number, you can see once alpha is about 2 or 3, then beta becomes beta naught, beta and beta naught are almost same. You would worry about this factor coming into picture when alpha is less than about 3, 3 or you know, if 2 also you can say, okay, shockly is all right. But when alpha is less than 2, drastically falls. Okay. So, number just for quantitative comparison I put, see beta by beta naught becomes at 0.88 when alpha equal to 2. So, when alpha is equal to 2, 2.5 for alpha equal to 3, they are only 8 percent off, 0.92. That is why this will be stable. Okay? When alpha is 3, almost you can say Shockley is right. That is why he got everything right most of the time, comparison with the experimental results. Now, let us put this thing beta is equal to 4 alpha divided by 1 plus alpha that is what you got from here. Okay. So, this is a factor finally, this determines what is IDS is and this is a factor which determines what is transconductance is. Transconductance is delta IDS by delta VGS which is nothing but twice beta into VGS minus the threshold. So, you want beta to be high. If beta is high only the transconductance is good. What we think usually from this expression is on long channel analysis, what we think is what is beta naught? C n C s w by 2 L. So, what we think is if L is reduced, beta will keep on increasing. Okay? That is what I have plotted here. This quantity beta naught is V n C s w by 2 L. That is keep on increasing. For example, when L is equal to 2, it may have something like uh, 49 or so, we will see the number numbers, but when L, L is about 0.5, it may go up to about 100 or even if you reduce 0.25, if it is 100 here, it will become 200. So, beta naught goes up exactly by same factor as L is reduced. If L is reduced by factor of 4, beta naught becomes 4 times. What do you think then is? your current goes up for a given change in voltage, the change in current is large by same factor, by factor you have reduced L, that is G m goes up quite a bit, but what happens is the beta, the actual the thing that comes into the equation is not beta naught, beta. As I keep on reducing L, that keeps on falling. You have from long channel device, you have moved to short channel devices, beta which is nothing but beta naught into that factor. Okay. Even though beta naught increases, this factor pulls it down. So, result is the beta of the device does not increase as much as you think it will be. 
See here, channel length equal to 2, channel length equal to 1. In this point, actually it would have doubled channel length 2 to 1, beta naught would have doubled, but beta does not double, it is almost flat. Okay, just to get the idea of numbers, so as we know what values you get in these devices, I put those the calculation here, example. What we are trying to find out is what beta naught is. First, and you can see beta naught is inversely dependent on channel length. Okay, that is why I just took it that way. All these are constants. Notice I have taken mu minus 4000, I have not taken 8500, a pessimistic value. Particularly when you go to doping concentration of 10 to the power 15 and above, your mobility is lower than that. So, I just took 4000. In reality, you make it better than that. Now, let us go to that. Compute this number okay, for the situation where the channel thickness is 0.25 micron, this is a typical number that you see in MESFET, and W is equal to 1 millimeter. Usually, these values are expressed as per millimeter width of channel, because I can always cheat by saying I get better beta. What I do? Increase W. Okay, so, to prevent for comparison purposes, we choose a standard, either W as 1 millimeter or W as a micron for comparison purposes. You do not take micron because that is not a real number. You may have may, millimeter also may be a slightly larger size, but for analog devices it may be all right. Okay? So, for that you substitute this quantity W and A, then I get this quantity 9.12 into power minus 6 by L. Now, all that we are seeing is if I change L, if I take L equal to 2 microns, 2 into 10 over minus 4, that is uh, okay, 2 microns, that is 4.5 into 10 over minus 4, that is 45 into 10 over minus 3. So, 45.6 milliampere per millimeter per whole square. All that I did is when L equal to 2, what is that beta naught for a channel thickness of 0.25 micron and at W equal to 1 millimeter. That is why so many milliamperes per millimeter channel width. Okay per volt square. And this is how you will see so many milliampere per voltage square, milliampere per millimeter. So, now what we do again is A we have taken as 0 0.25. What we would like to see is what is alpha now? Because we have got this beta naught, what is beta? So, for that we must find what is VP 0 is, because after all alpha is decided by not only channel length, and the saturation field is about 3 kV per centimeter by VP0. Let us see what is this. See, you have got a good criterion to decide whether alpha is whether it is a long channel or short channel, whether it is alpha. So, when you take this, substitute all these values, VP0 is about 1 volt. 1.05, I took it as 1 volt. Now, what is ES is if I take 3.3 in 10 to 3 volts per centimeter. That is missing here. It is so many volts per centimeter. Okay. Then L is equal to 2 microns if I take. See, we calculated that for 2 microns. L equal to 2 microns, electric field is 3 kV per centimeter, which is good for well, mass net based devices. So, L into EFS, L into EFS because this 2 in 10 to power minus 4 into 3 in 10 to power 3 this is 0.6. So, 4 alpha by 1 plus 4 alpha is 0.7. See alpha is less than 1 in this case 0.6. It is actually a short channel device even though it is 2 microns. Okay. Now, so beta is equal to beta naught into 0.7. So, beta naught is 4 45.6 we saw just now. So, this is 31.98. Okay. So, what we said is if alpha were not coming into picture, if the both were long channel devices and I reduce, if I reduce channel length from 2 to 1 micron, that would go from 45.6 to 91.2. But now, even for 2 microns, it is 31.98. If nothing else happens, it would have been 62 when you make L equal to 1. So, 
So, I just plugging in those numbers, just go through that same calculations, okay, you will get beta is equal to instead of 91.2, you get 49.7. So, what you are telling is you get L equal to 2 micron, you get beta equal to 31 point, how much is that? 31.98 milliampere per millimeter whole square. You reduce the channel length by a factor of 2, beta does not increase double. It does not double, it is just 49.7. So, what you are telling is going back to that diagram, this diagram. I have illustrated numbers, I have quickly gone through that, but as this equation itself, itself tells, the transconductance does not improve when you reduce the channel length if you are in the region of short channel length. Let us see the extreme what happens. Yeah. So, what we saw is this is the general equation beta naught into 4 alpha by 1 plus 4 alpha. Alpha very much less than 1 that is equal to 4 alpha this factor. So, this becomes now beta naught into 4 alpha into that quantity that is beta naught into 4 alpha into Bgs minus B threshold whole square, which now becomes I substitute for that alpha, which is L E of S by B P 0. Now, look at what happens. Extreme case when alpha is very much less than 1, you get this. What do you see from here? What you see is the numerator L and this L gets cancelled and this whole term becomes independent of L. So, that means, you will not get any improvement in the current or any improvement in transconductance once you hit the short channel effect, L short channel devices. So, I just substitute here, cancel these two and mu n into E f s is nothing but velocity maturation E f s. So, I just removed that alpha effect etcetera, C s w into mu n into E f s. C s w is mu n into E f s divided by E p 0. Let us go back to that. In the denominator only you have E p 0, numerator you have got mu n into E f s and C s w that is what you have got. And this quantity mu n into E f s is nothing but saturation velocity because you have taken it piecewise. So, that is when alpha is very much less than 1, you have got entire thing depending upon the saturation velocity or the effective saturation velocity if you want to call it. You will see why we talk so. If saturation velocity is fixed or the effective velocity in the channel is constant, that is constant. All that you will be all that will affect I d s and G m will be C of s and V p 0. W of course, is a quantity which do not want to talk of because that takes more space. You can increase W to increase transconductance and I d s, but that takes more space that may not be the one that you will like unless you are forced to do so. Okay? And also of course, how much is the V g s over and above threshold voltage. So, what we are trying to point out is let us remove all these things. So, ultimately what we arrived at is alpha very much less than 1, go to 0 0.6, 0 0.4 etcetera if you go then I d s equal to C s w okay, C s w twice into V of s divided by V p 0. That is what we are telling. Okay. Now, G m is d i d s divided by d v g s is actually equal to 4 times c of s 
four times. P of s w p of s divided by v p 0 into p g s minus v s. Okay? I am sorry. Twice. Differential of that, twice that is becomes 4 is yes, with minus v threshold linear. So, that is what we are trying. So, our argument tells you this is the thing. Now, let us take a look at some of the. So, both ideas and g m are independent of the channel length L for the situation alpha very much less than 1. Now, let us take a look at this. It is not enough if you get at the analytical expression for the current and transconductance. What we would see is experimentally, do you see the same effect? That is what you want to see. So, people have made experiments. They have uh, fabricated two devices, two types of devices, where one of them has got a channel length equal to 1.2 microns. Doping is 2.5 in 10 to the power 17, quite high doping they took, which will give a mobility which is not very high, but maybe something like 4000 of that order. Notice this diagram. This edge has a spacing of that much, some d. Here also they kept the same d, okay, perfectly aligned on the edges to that. But all that they did is this length, channel length is 0.2 micron, that is 1.2 micron. Okay. Now, one I just want to go through the process. I just want to go through the process that is done here because it is very interesting. It is interesting for different cases, uh, different reasons. One is they could prove whatever the see whether what is arrived at is correct or not. Number two, you see in the conventional lithography, where optical lithography using they could get 0.2 microns channel length. Okay. So, the way these devices are made, the MOSFETs are made. In fact, this sort of MOSFETs have been fabricated in the laboratory in IIT or our micro electronics laboratory also by using this approach. So, the way it is made is like this. First, take the semi insulating LM arsenide, okay. take the semi insulating LM arsenide, on which there is an epitaxial layer, on which they have this epitaxial layer. Okay. We can put it down a bit because I need some space. I will put it down here. Semi insulating. I have not shown this in the slides, but you can see it here now. That is the N gallium arsenide, N type. Okay. Of doping concentration, which is about 2.5 in 10 to the power 17. That is what they have taken. How do you make MOSFET? Very simple. First, you make OMI contact like that. How do you make? You operate gold germanium alloy at 400 for 1 minute. That is it, you get a good ohmic contact. This is the source and the source contact and the drain contact. Okay. Evaporate gold germanium, you can etch from these portions and alloy it, or you can ensure that it is evaporated only in these portions, other portions that is photoresis lift off. We will see what it is. So, you can do that. So, in the final analysis, this contact is done first. Because you do not want to form the 
prati barrier first. So, if you do other way, first make the Schottky barrier and then put this one, what happens? You have got subjecting it to 400 degree centigrade. So, there is a danger that the Schottky also can form some sort of alloy with the substrate. That is why you put it afterwards. Now, what they did was they deposited, they put photoresist, put photoresist everywhere, spin photoresist, you can say I should not be saying put photoresist, spin photoresist, positive photoresist, okay, and then develop it. develop it like that. This is the photoresist. Okay. So, that is the photoresist. Okay. So, let us write it slightly better there. That is the photoresist. Notice there is a slight overhang on that because this is a photo is called A Z thirteen fifty. Positive photoresist. Positive for PR for photoresist. Positive photoresist. This is the supply make company which gives that number. Now you give some chemical treatment like uh, solutions like benzene or tolvane, it gets slightly tougher on the top. Okay. Now, if I just have a mask with which I expose the photoresist in this portion, the lithography process you know that have a mask for example, if this is a pattern that is there and everywhere it is dark and if this is not dark in the glass plate, you have a pattern glass plate on which everywhere it is dark, it is transparent here okay. and an emulsion is present that is the mask making process. First you must generate that pattern. So, if you have it like that, now if I shine light through this, light will go through that okay. and it will develop, it will be exposed the photorist into in this region. Now, when you put in the developer, if it is a positive photorist, wherever it is exposed, it will get developed. That means it will get dissolved in the developer. Other portions will remain. That means wherever dark pattern was present, photoresist will remain. That is the positive photoresist. Now, what I put there, that particular diagram is when I have when I have the chemical treatment done on the top, the top layer of the photoresist becomes a bit tougher. So, when I if this is the window opening, this, this is the size, if this is the window opening, I develop over develop it. If I over develop it slightly, what happens is this does not get attacked, but it slightly undercuts below that. The top surface is chemically treated, slight undercutting you get. If I do not expose it to chemical, some chemical treatment like benzene or toluene, you will get everywhere reduction. See, you will get everywhere like this if you over develop, but you do not want that, that you are done by toughening that. This is the technology that they have used. Now, 1.2 micron window is that is open, the window opening is 1.2 micron or okay. So, the this extension that you get here is marginal. So, what they have adjusted is there is 1.2 micron, this is more than that. Now, you operate the gate metal that is titanium, platinum, gold, there are the three combinations, multi layer metals. You operate what happens? Leave the photoresist there, evaporate vertically down. Okay. Evaporate gate metal. Evaporate gate metal. I think. Okay. I think that color did not come out. Sorry, just one minute. Evaporate gate 
get metal or get metal for not for another. Usually titanium, platinum, gold, three layers are put. Ultimately gold, so that we can bond very easily. Okay. So now, when you operate, what happens? That is where the metal comes in. This portion is shadow masking it. So metal will go through this, and it, this will be one point two microns. One point two microns. Okay, that is chosen to be one point two microns. That portion. Okay, you have chosen that length to be one point two microns. Now, with the same pattern generated, what they have done is they have. Realized the next one that is channel length, which is 0.2 micron. That is where the ingenuity was present in the entire thing. So what I will do is, I will remove this particular diagram now, modify it only for your operation. See, they have got two wafers. In one wafer, they have done the operation vertically down. In another wafer. Up to this point, they have done the same thing, and all this is done like this. It's a drawing the whole thing to illustrate that they use the same process for realizing the two channel lengths that is retained as it is. How do I get a short channel length? Rather, a short gate length. What you are looking for is a short gate length. What they did was it's very interesting, which you know, they evaporated like this. Evaporate at an angle. You operate at an angle. Okay, you operate at an angle. So now this is shadow masking that. This is preventing it from going in this direction. This is a nice thing about this technology. So it goes like this. Now what do you have got metal landing right up to that point only. So you will have metal resting like this. All over here, when it goes, it rests here like this. So you got metal like this. Beyond that point, it doesn't come because this is masking. That's all. It's line of sight. It's line of sight communication between the metal and the wafer. The metal rests only in the place where it can go. So this is shadowing it. You get that. And this is much smaller compared to that. And that is actually. Point two micron. I forgot to tell you one thing. After this is evaporated, the photorest must be removed. In the previous case also, how do you remove that? Okay. When you do this, metal will go here, here, here. All through there will be metal. Previous case also there will be metal all through. But now what you do is. You don't want the photoresist afterwards. Don't want the metal here. You want only this metal. Previous case also, you don't want the metal on the photoresist. That is gone on silk semiconductor in the, some portion. All that you do is put this wafer into a chemical, acetone. 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 I'll put it here. On the top, acetone dissolves positive, positive photoresist. That is this. Okay, positive photoresist (PPR). That's a shortcut term that is used by people who work on technology. So once that is removed, what happens? 
if it is dissolves the photo resist, whatever metal is on the top of that goes off. It is called lift off. Shall I do that? So, when I do lift off, of course, after the operation is over, this is what you will see. This is what you see at the end of your operation. Now, when you do lift off, that is gone. What is it? Along with that metal on top has gone. Now, this will go along with that metal on the top will go, but this is anchored onto substrate that remains. So, you have got this gate which is 0.2 microns. In the previous case, all the metal goes, you will get that 0.2 microns. So, that is how they get it. I just went through this technology because I thought it is very interesting for us to see can be made use of in some technology wherever you require. And I hope you understand the meaning of lift off. Lift off is the technique that is used here. That is the photoresist metal is on the photoresist, dissolves the photoresist, the metal on the photoresist is lifted off. That is called lift off. No? remove the metal from over the PPR. You remove the metal from over the P PPR by removing the PPR itself. <laughs> okay? So, that is a trick. Okay, now, this is the device. Device 1 long channel device 2, two 0.6 micro no, not long channel 1.2 micro 0.6 micro now what would you expect for this situation for this device the pinch of voltage for the doping and the thickness is to estimate substitute for q nd 2.5 and over 17 and a is 0.15 and over minus 4 thickness is 0.15 channel thickness in this case and putting all these things it is 3.9 volt quite large pinch of voltage, the doping is high. Okay. What is this LES? What we want to see is how much is alpha for this case. Alpha decides whether it will obey Shockley's equation or not. L 1, first device L 1 into EFS 3 into 10 over 3 into 1.2 into 10 over minus 4, that is 0.36. Alpha is very much less than 1. If 1.2 micron channel length, if alpha is very much less than 1, for the next device 2, which is 0.2 micron channel length is even smaller, 0.06. So, what we are telling is we have got devices with which alpha is very much smaller than 1. What we should expect is this equation. This is correct, there is nothing wrong with that. What we can expect is IDS should be now independent of channel length, because alpha is 0.36 and 0.06, alpha is very much less than 1. So, therefore, we must get that. And GM also should be independent of channel length. But now, what they observed when they made the experiment is, in both the cases alpha is less than 1. So, we expect that IDS and GM will be independent of channel length. For the two devices, we must get same IDS, same GM. Measurement at VGS equals 0, because after all, if 0 is 0.9, 3.9 volts, is it enhancement or depletion type? Threshold voltage negative means it is depletion type, threshold voltage positive is enhancement type, because P B i minus V P 0 is threshold voltage, V P 0 is 3.9, negative of course, okay? depletion, because V B i will be 0 0.8, 0 0.9 volts, not more than that. So, it is a depletion type. Okay? So, V G S equal to 0, then we current flowing, because after all this device current will be flowing through that thing. What they observed in this case is ID in the device 2 where channel length is 0 0.2 micron is 3 times the ID of the 3 times IDS 1, this I is to be here, okay? 3 times IDS 1 and GM 2 is almost equal to GM 1. So, this is 3 times in the short channel device, 0.2 micron channel device this is almost constant. 
there is something wrong somewhere or some parameter is changing. So, what it is actually we will have to analyze and see. In fact, what parameter that will be getting affected will be the threshold voltage itself. Okay. And threshold voltage change, we will see what, what are the causes etcetera in the next lecture. Thank you.